What do you swear you saw but don't have any proof of? As a child, I touched some weird pest plant in our garden. I think it stung me. Then I saw everything in inverted colors for a short time and then back to normal. I was in such shock I couldn't explain it to my mom. I just went to her crying. You probably touched Brugmansia. They are loaded with scopolamine and can cause you to see things that are not there. Inverse colors are a common hallucination from them. Bergmansia is a very common garden flower, despite its effects because only small children will be affected by contact alone. Did you have big orange flowers that hang downward in your garden? I saw a bunch of crows, around 20, gather around in a circle. I was like, what the hell? Then took a closer look to see three other crows in the middle of the circle, all on their backs. And some crows from the circle would hop in and try to peck at the three crows while they cawed and tried to defend themselves with their feet. I know crows are smart and all, but didn't expect this level of social behavior. It went on for a while before a kid ran in and scattered them all. My biology teacher in 7th grade told me she came across the same thing, called it crow court, and said that crows who broke the law were tried by others. The crimes were stealing food from young crows or mothers and killing defenseless crows. She said that sometimes they would just rip out a few feathers from the tail so they couldn't fly for a while and sometimes they'd kill it depending on the severity of the offense. Of course, she also used a rock for deodorant and brought a bunch of animals to class without permission, so who knows? Edit. I know now that the rock is an alum. Thanks for that info. I was in line at a cafeteria. The guy in front of me was holding a pudding cup. Someone walked by, stumbled, and fell into the pudding cup guy, knocking his pudding cup out of his hand. While everyone is looking at the guy stumbling, the pudding cup went a good two feet straight up in the air. The pudding cup guy was totally focused and at the last second turned and caught the pudding cup behind his back. He looked at me, smiled, and that was it. No one else saw it. My friend and I were watching basketball in the early days when Charles Barkley was a panelist. He was apologizing for calling a team midgets and saying that he now knew it was offensive. But as they were going to the commercial, we both heard him say over a hot mic, Besides, they shouldn't hate me, they should hate God. My friend and I were amazed and convinced he would be fired. But not only did we never hear about it again, but the clip also doesn't even exist online anywhere. It's as though we had a double delusion. I was having a secret smoke one night, and when I was finished, I went to put the ashtray in my hiding place on top of the high cupboard in my kitchen. Instead of getting the footstool, I was on my tiptoes and stretched up to put the ashtray there, and when I lost balance and the ashtray slipped out of my fingers, it fell down onto the floor. I ducked out of the way so I didn't get covered in ash or get hit by the heavy glass ashtray, and I heard it hit the ground behind me loudly and then clatter as it rolled. I sighed as I knew I'd have to clean up the ash from the floor and was annoyed at myself for being clumsy. But then when I turned around to see where I had heard it land, there was nothing there, or even a trace of ash on the floor. But there was nothing. It and its contents had simply vanished into thin air. I went to bed totally freaked out that night and had another look the next morning, but it was still gone and I've never seen it again since. A fat squirrel in a tree threw a piece of fried chicken at me. When I was about six, my entire family was helping to build my grandparents a new house. I was helping my dad move some really long 2x4s from the lumber pile when a mouse ran out from under the board I had moved. Out in the middle of the woods, mice were no big deal to any of us. I did a double take though, because the mouse was freaking blue. I don't mean the sun reflected off of its fur and it had a blue sheen to it. I mean a brilliant royal blue. He was running fast, but I got my dad to notice it too, and he agreed that the mouse was really royal freaking blue. We've told multiple people, my mom included, and no one believes us, but we know we saw it. I was at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. I walked up to the cuttlefish tank, and for some reason all 20 or so of the cuttlefish rushed over to me. It was a big tank, maybe 10 feet long. I walked the length of it and they followed me. I walked back and they followed. A few people saw it and tried it themselves, but alas, the cuttlefish only had eyes for me. My best guess as to the cause was that the guy who feeds them is my doppelganger. When I was five, I liked to mix various liquids. Playing chemistry, I guess. My grandma let me play with all her bathroom stuff. I mixed her shampoos and creams and cleaning products, etc. I just realized now this might have been dangerous if I had mixed ammonia and bleach, for example. I swear I created a white liquid that produced a single black bubble that would come to the surface and pop at regular intervals. No one believes me, or maybe no one cares. I guess it's not that cool. When I was about 10 years old, I saw my old dog catch a crow out of the air and then just gently release it. 
One time when I was really young, maybe like 10 years old, I came home after school and was making myself a salami sandwich. I pulled the bag of salami out and took out two slices. I smacked the two slices together and suddenly they became one. I tried my hardest to separate them, but there was no seam or anything that I could split them up with. I even showed it to my mom, but not a single person believed me when I told them. I had fused two pieces of salami together. Once when I was a teenager, I was watching a movie by myself. The TV room then had two chairs separated by a couch. I was on the chair to the right, and at one point I laughed really hard at the movie. I heard someone else laugh and saw what seemed to be a girl my age double over in laughter in the other chair. The weird thing is, it didn't startle me. It just felt nice to share laughter. Then I realized that I was alone in the whole house and the chair was empty, so I turned off the TV and went outside. LOL. When I was about 10, they started putting missing children on milk cartons. Every morning for a while, I was looking at this boy's face on the side of the milk while I would eat my cereal. Then one day, a car went down my street while I was playing outside and there was a boy in the back seat with his face up close to the window looking out. I'm 99% sure it was the boy from the milk carton. I told my parents, but they didn't believe me. When I was around 10 years old, I went down to a lake when I was on holiday. When I got down there, I vividly remember a massive ball of lightning just hovering, and then it struck the middle of the lake. I never ran so fast in my life back to the little house that we were staying in. A kangaroo, and we don't live in Australia. There was something stuck in my grandmother's garage crashing all over the place. I opened the door and saw it and went to tell them. It came through the door and ran slash jumped across the field. Everyone thinks I was making it up, but nobody else was there to see it. While I was playing poker with a few friends, I was dealing and somehow managed to deal with a royal flush on the board, giving every person a royal flush. This was well into our game and the cards were definitely well shuffled. And don't forget, I also placed the burn cards down. The odds of this are so astronomical that apart from the friends I was playing with, no one would believe it happened and would assume I'm just a liar. One day I was looking out the window of my office and four semi-trucks drove past one after the other. They were in order, Costco, Costco, Cisco, and Cisco. Half the people I mention it to don't care and the other half don't believe me. A chameleon escaped from a bag when my friend was giving it to me, and it leaped into a big pile of snow. I looked around for it for a while and I couldn't find it so I gave up. Several weeks later, the snow all melted and I was out there and I found the lizard partially frozen to the ground. I peeled him off and put it in one of those little plastic tanks and sat it by the radiator in my house. Within an hour or two, the lizard was hopping around the cage like nothing ever happened. It lived for several years after that and was known to my friend and me as Jesus the Resurrection Lizard. A man dressed as a Confederate soldier was walking down my street as I was heading home from work. There was a school bus coming and he stopped on the other side of the road as if to let the bus pass before crossing, and I stopped at the stop sign. We looked at each other, the bus passed, and then he was gone. Not my story, but my brother's. He lost his wallet and was retracing his steps looking for it. A homeless man approached him at a coffee shop and said to him, Don't worry, it's in the bathroom sink. Your wallet is in the bathroom sink. Later that night, he did indeed find his wallet at home in the bathroom sink. A few days later, he saw the same homeless man and thanked him for his help. The guy became really irritated and told my brother that he had never seen him before. It could have been a lucky guess, but I think Magical Bum makes for a better story. I was at my mom's side when she passed away. I swear seconds before she departed, I heard her and my grandmother, who had died in the 80s, behind me. Mom said, I really look awful. And grandma said, it's time to go. I turned around, but the sun was coming in through the window. So a little bright. It was at that very moment that mom passed away. I watched a white light hover in the distance between two mountains and then it moved up, then down. At that point, I called my buddies outside to watch it. We witnessed it move from side to side, then in a perfect clockwise circle, then anti-clockwise. Next, it started doing tight figure eights one way, then back the other way. We watched it then move diagonally to the left, then back to the center, diagonally right, then back to the center. During this, we discussed the possibilities of what it could be. A helicopter, a skilled pilot, a series of spotlights, the speed at which it moved, and the fact that it didn't waver slightly and the fact that the motion was so fluid left us without an explanation. As we discussed and watched the movements, the light moved even faster up and down and diagonally. It then sped off to the right at a speed that we could barely focus on. 
It was now about three kilometers on the other side of the mountain, and then suddenly it took off straight up and out towards the stars till it was gone. When I was about 10 or 11, we were having a get-together at my grandma's house for the holidays. All of us cousins played all day, and when night fell, we played hide-and-seek. While the adults smoked and drank up by the house, we stayed at the back of the property just having a good time. I was hiding in between a bush and the property fence when I heard the strangest sound. It was almost a scream, both happy and miserable at the same time. I jumped up and kind of shouted. All my cousins heard it and we all saw it too. It was an animal on two legs and it ran off with a really jerky motion. Being the oldest by about three years, I calmed down the crying little ones and explained as best I could that it was just someone trying to scare us. I've had nightmares about that sound in my mind, and it seems a grotesque mimicry of our joyous screams and laughter as we played. None of my cousins today will admit to even remembering the incident, although the adults remembered the commotion it caused. I was snorkeling in Hawaii once, and I swear I saw something that looked like a clear chameleon, but as soon as I got close it buried itself in the sand. I still vividly remember discovering a new species. When I was 10, we had a 14-year-old German Shepherd who was getting very sick. I was home alone momentarily as my mom went to the neighborhood to pick up a book or something. Our German Shepherd came over, convinced me to walk outside with him, and started licking my hands looked at me and ran away jumping the fence and he never came back. He was so loyal and good that to this day, no one believes me and thinks he was stolen because he would never leave. I'm almost certain he did that because he didn't want us to see him die, and he wanted to go to this massive forest area and do his thing. I miss you, buddy. A monkey jumping from car to car on a busy street. I could probably draw a sketch of it even though this happened about five years ago. Definitely one of the most odd things I saw. Unfortunately, everyone thinks I'm telling a bad joke when I explain what I saw, or they just nod it off and continue not giving a frick. I was out for a walk late one night. This was in rural Illinois, so there was nobody else out. I noticed from a distance that there were these squirrels just standing in the middle of the road. Thought to myself that this is strange. When I got closer, I noticed that there were three squirrels standing around a cat that was laying down. I thought for a minute the cat was dead. But when I got closer and walked past them, the squirrels and the cat followed me with their eyes, none of them moving a muscle. It was a look like, move it along, nothing to see here. Still, to this day, I think of how bizarre that was. After my grandmother died, she left her rocking chair that she had rocked me to sleep in as a little boy. I kept it in my bedroom as a reminder of her. Not long after she passed, I would wake up and see her quietly sitting in the rocker, smiling. We'd have a conversation just as we did when she were alive. This recurred regularly night after night, with all sorts of discussions, until one night when she disappeared from the rocking chair right before my eyes, never to return. I can't prove any of it, of course, but if those nightly visitations were all dreams, they were hands down the most vivid series ever. The sad part is that after she stopped appearing, that rocker seemed very empty, and I realized how much I missed her. When my grandfather died, my 12-year-old self was quite upset. I asked my dad for two dimes. I know it's odd. I put one in his breast coat pocket and held one myself. Years later, my whole family has been finding dimes everywhere in random spots. They attributed this to grandpa looking over us. Kind of turned into a thing. On that token, my dad forgot about the double dime I requested at grandpa's funeral. I brought it up what happened at the family dinner recently and they think I made it up. Ball lightning. It was right after a thunderstorm passed by. I could see floating orbs in the sky. There were a couple of cars parked by an open field and people were watching this happen. So I parked and got out to join them. We all sort of just looked on in silence until they winked out one by one. There were at least 10 of them and they seemed to fly together in patterns. Sometimes they were fast, other times they slowed down or reversed direction. They seemed small, but I can tell this wasn't because they were far up in the sky. If I were to guess, they'd be about the size of a basketball, maybe a little larger. The whole ordeal lasted only 30 minutes. We then all got in our cars and left. I tried taking pictures, but it was dark and the lights were too faint to make out. I should record a video instead. I noticed someone was recording them at the scene, so I kind of hoped I'd see it online at some point but it's been two years now, so I guess not. I've had glasses since the third grade. I was playing tackle football with friends after school, tackled one of my friends, had a really big collision, and for a second I regained full eyesight. Then I blinked and it was gone again. My sister and I both had this before. It is often unprovoked and a rare occurrence. We just blink and wham, our vision is 2020. 
then we blink too soon and it's over. I remember grocery shopping with my mother once when I was about 13 and I blinked and suddenly had perfect vision. I saw everything clearly and could read all the labeled sections in the back. I blinked and everything was blurry again. I was amazed and also extremely disappointed that it disappeared so quickly. Years ago, when my mom was pregnant with me, she saw a monkey in the tree outside of her house. She went to tell everyone, but no one believed her. Sure, pregnant lady. But sure enough, the news that night had a story about a zoo breakout. A driver in my hometown, suburban New Jersey, saw a giraffe run across his path. He immediately pulled over for a cup of coffee and told people he thought he was hallucinating. They tried to call him an ambulance, but then they saw police cars going by. Turns out the circus was in town and had lost its giraffe. I was watching a football game a couple of years ago, and in one of the shots where they panned over the crowd, I saw a girl look straight at the camera and mouth my name. It scared the crap out of me, but when I rewinded it, the seat was actually empty. Maybe I just need to find someone to fill that seat. I saw a pterodactyl flying overhead one time. A giant. This guy's feet were as long as a pillow, and his hands made a newspaper look small. My friends think I exaggerated how large he was. I don't. Sometime in the early 2000s, my wife and I went to an Eminem concert at the House of Blues on Sunset in LA. Anyway, the entire show, maybe 90 minutes, there was a guy dancing on stage in a full mummy suit. And he is doing really awkward and funny dances that you wouldn't expect from a background dancer at a rap concert. But hey, he's in a mummy suit, so whatever. The show ends and Eminem screams into the mic, Do y'all want to know who the mummy is? The crowd cheers and he screams, Dustin Hoffman! He pulls a zipper in the back of the costume and out comes an extremely sweaty, 60-something-year-old Dustin Hoffman. The crowd goes into stunned silence for a few seconds and then erupts in cheers. My wife and I just kind of looked at each other in disbelief, and when I tell people, they always say something like, oh, it must have just been someone found that looked like him. But that guy was Dustin Hoffman, and no, I have no proof. Years ago, I left my laptop open at a Starbucks while I left to get my drink. When I returned, Bill Murray was sitting in front of my screen, tapping away on the keyboard. I looked over his shoulder and he anonymously posted a number of stories regarding encounters with himself. They ranged from tackling others, stealing food, and other fun oddities. When he finished, he closed my laptop, stood up and looked me in the eye. Then he said, no one will ever believe you, and walked away. When I was about seven or eight, I was at the park close to my house, and I swear on my life I saw a pterodactyl. Not a big hawk or a plane or some crap, a whole ass pterodactyl. I saw Bart Simpson washing his face in someone's house while I was sitting in my dad's car. I was sitting outside at a restaurant waiting for my food, and a flying ant landed on my table. Cool, a flying ant. You don't see that too often. The flying ant then wiggled a wing into its jaws and ripped it off. What the hell? Then it wiggled its other wing into its jaws and ripped it off too. I was obviously losing my crap as other patrons began to stare at my reaction. The ant reflected on its new position in life and walked off into the sunset. A friend of mine is absolutely convinced that she saw William Shatner in an Ikea once. She has no proof, but she still stands by her claim almost a year later. I was riding in the back seat of a friend's car one night. I looked over to the side of the road and saw a dog. Its body looked something like an English bulldog. As we got closer, I could see that it had a human face. That freaked me out a little bit. I swear that one day in the middle of a pretty bad snowfall in Montreal, I was driving to meet a friend and I saw a guy on a unicycle carrying a trombone. He was wearing ski goggles and just going down the street heading somewhere. The tire on his unicycle was pretty thick, so I'm guessing this was his weather beater unicycle. When I got to my friend's place and explained it, they thought I was just trying to be funny. I swear it happened. I was a student at Central Michigan back in 2000, and I was driving back to campus. A pickup truck began tailgating me really closely on the rural two-lane road. Like anyone, I was getting all grumpy and offended over it. This went on for several minutes, and finally I decided I was going to brake check him. I looked in my rearview mirror and readied the brake foot. I did not see the truck on my tail. Rather, I saw him sliding upside down on his roof through someone's field, a cloud of dust rolling along behind him. I continued driving as this didn't immediately register with me what was going on. That guy must have just ended himself. Another 10 minutes down the road, my brain clicked back on and I got that awful feeling like I saw someone get super injured and I just ignored it. I turned around and drove like a maniac back to where I thought I had seen the wreck. Got there, no emergency vehicles, no upside down truck. 
I can still vividly see his truck upside down and the dust cloud. When I was a kid, and I was living in Egypt, I went scuba diving around the reefs in Alexandria, and I saw this really creepy yellowish-brownish two-foot-long serpent thing that looked back at me. I immediately got out of the water and swam to shore. I looked it up later, and turns out what I encountered was a Gunther's sea snake, apparently one of the rarest sea snakes in the world. Ten years ago, I spent a summer in Alaska in a small coastal town. For several nights, a feral cat would sulk around my house and make weird noises. It sounded as unfortunate as it looked, suffering from possible mange, a bad leg, patchy fur. Then one night, I nearly stepped on its dead body while walking home. Quickly, I called for my friends in the house, and they brought out a garbage bag and a shovel. We poked the cat with a shovel, looking for any identification or sign of life. None. We found a spot off the dirt path, tied it up in the garbage bag, and buried it. About a week later, walking with my friend back home in the dark, I heard a familiar sound. I raised a flashlight ahead of me by no more than 20 feet was that freaking cat. Same messed up fur and injuries. I was stunned. I turned to look at my friend and he was mortified. We watched in silence as the cat just casually walked away out of view of the flashlight, never to be seen again. To this day, I have no explanation. Maybe it was a sibling that happened to look exactly like the one we buried and suffered the same injuries. Guess this might be why I'm more of a dog person. When I was five, I was playing in my backyard. The yard was long and ended in a fence and a gate. A laneway ran parallel to both. I remember looking up at one point and seeing three red balloons floating there, tied to strings disappearing behind the fence. I was curious and started walking towards the balloons, but suddenly I felt a chill up my spine and experienced goosebumps for the first time in my life. I stopped halfway down the yard. Then a clown's head popped up and turned to look at me. It was white, bald, with red hair on its sides. There was something deeply sinister about it, like I was nothing more than prey to it, nothing more than an insect. We stared at each other for what seemed like a long time. I was too scared to move, rigid as a board. The clown smiled and vanished below the fence. The balloons stayed in place. I heard the latch on the back gate start to rattle, so I ran into my house, scared and crying for my mom. She did not believe me, but went out to look. I begged her not to. I cowered in the kitchen. It seemed like forever, but she came back. For a second before she realized I was looking at her, I thought she seemed unsettled. But there were no balloons and no one down in the lane, she declared with a smile, then dismissed it as overactive imagination. I had some nightmares about the experience for the next few weeks. My mom stayed up with me, trying to convince me it was all in my imagination. The nightmares and memory of the experience sank into my subconscious. Until years later, as an adult, we watched the miniseries It as a family. When I saw Pennywise, goosebumps ran up my spine. I was petrified, rigid as a board again. I looked over at my mom to tell her that this is what the clown had looked like. She looked unsettled, and when our eyes met, I knew she had seen it too. When I was around 10 years old, I saw a strange black object hovering right above my friend's house in broad daylight. It had the shape of a triangle, and it was not moving at all. It stayed there for about 20 seconds and then disappeared. I still have no explanation at all for it. My grandpa died when I was about three years old. Apparently, whenever my family visited him, I would always be glued to the window watching him mow the lawn. The day after he died of an unexpected heart attack, I distinctly remember seeing him out in his front yard mowing the lawn. Everyone else dismissed it, and it was probably just a little kid seeing things, but it seemed so real. When I was in the second grade, I lived in Korea. My dad was in the army. We didn't have a dryer. Instead, we had a clothesline for the front yard. Picture in your mind a squat duplex with a flat roof. The front yard has a high sturdy wall of stone and a giant tree. Two poles are dug into the ground for the clothesline. I'm outside playing and not really paying attention to my surroundings. I turned and I could see my reflection in its eyes. A huge spider about a foot in diameter, it was mostly yellow with black and a small touch of red. I screamed and ran inside to get my dad. When we came back out, it was gone. All that was left was the web stretching across the clothesline poles. I asked my mom about it recently. She remembers seeing it around the giant tree occasionally. I wish we had pictures. It was one of my favorite stories to tell students. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a story you'd like to share, please do so in the comments below. Then be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when our next video is available. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again, and see you next time.